Hi, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers, one of the surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you again for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. I hope you'll pass this on to friends and family and continue to subscribe or recommend people to subscribe. Uh, we've had a quite a wonderful outpouring of support for the podcast from patients, patients emailing us from all over the world with suggestions. So today we're going to talk about a request from a patient from the UK who asked about what's called macular degeneration. And so we're gonna to talk today about this condition. We'll talk a little bit about her life story. And then we're gonna talk about what macular degeneration is, how it happens, what you can do to prevent it, and of course, treatments. So we're gonna do this in multiple podcasts. We're, the first part of this series is gonna be talking about what macular degeneration actually is, what is the macula. And so this patient has, has been a patient of mine for years and she has been followed for dry eyes, but as she got older into her 70s, she started to find that when she looked at lines that were straight, they started becoming crooked. And so she had come in to see us and we had noticed a few years ago something in her eyes called drusen and we're going to go through this in just a few minutes what that is and so you know obviously we recommend things to protect the eyes always for everybody in the world from birth till death sunglasses sun protection for your eyes and your face of course especially for your eyes because the uv light can be damaging to the macula and the retina so we're going to go through all that so she noticed this kind of wiggling in her vision. So she saw an ophthalmologist in the UK and basically that she was diagnosed with what's called wet macular degeneration. And she reached out to me to kind of have us talk a little bit more about what that is and what are some of the latest treatments and what's available. So we're gonna go through all of that today. So just going through our standard eyeball here. So those of you that are on the YouTube video version of this will see me showing the eyeball, uh, which basically we're showing the front of the eyes called the cornea. The back of the eye has a cable that connects the eye to the brain called the optic nerve that's in charge of also your kind of the electrical impulses to the brain and right behind the color part of your eye which is either blue green black brown different variations that's called the iris is the lens and the lens is what can develop a cataract it's usually clear just like you look through a clear window and it can form different types of colors of whitish brown yellow that show cloudiness that's a cataract Inside the middle of the eye is the vitreous, which is the gelatin that can change as you get older. People get floaters, sometimes even some flashing from aging. You can even get a vitreous detachment, which is not a retinal detachment, but just changes in the vitreous that can pull on the retina. Uh, and the retina is like an electrical circuit also. So the retina is like the old type of film of those old cameras we used to have before digital cameras that have a lot of nerve fiber tissue. There are blood vessels that connect the retina and basically uh, new, provide nutrients to the retina and also remove the waste products of the retina also. So the retina is kind of the back of the eye that is kind of connected with the nerve cable of the optic nerve to the back of the brain. So it's a neural circuit. And so when we talk about the retina, there's one particular part of the retina that's 1,500 microns, very small, that's called the macula. And on these eyeballs, it's a very tiny little notch. And so this kind of macula is what you see the world with. Your macula has a lot of what's called cones, and they're little small cells that are equipped to transfer the light that comes into your eye into color. And so you see me right now, if you're looking at me on the YouTube video with your cones, and then the peripheral part of your kind of vision is mostly made up of rods and some few, a few cones. So the rods are in charge of what you see at nighttime. If you turn off the lights in the room, for instance, then your rods are gonna kick in. If you turn on the light, then you're gonna have your cones kick in. So the macula is mostly 99.9%, .9%, I think, composed of, of these cones and most of the rods in the peripheral retina. So what happens with macular degeneration is that there are waste products as we live our life, especially if we're exposed to a lot of UV light. If we're smokers or we have a poor diet or the lack of antioxidants in our diet has accumulated through years and years of being used, there's waste products that start to not be able to be excreted. So the blood vessels are there to kind of excrete the waste products and the there's something behind the retina called the choroid uh, or the choriocapillaris which are the blood vessels behind that protect the retina from degeneration or waste product accumulation so this thin piece of retina is probably the size of like a very thin piece of saran wrap and within that saran wrap there are about 10 layers that are in charge of your vision and each layer can be actually assessed and evaluated and now we have technology called OCT, optical coherence tomography, which takes a slice 
of that retina just by a visual image, so there's no need to cut or anything, we can see every single layer of that retina with just looking into your eyes and taking a picture, which is absolutely fascinating. It's the only place in the body you can see nerve tissue without cutting open the skin. And it's not just the optic nerve that's a nerve tissue, but your whole retina is really a nerve fiber tissue circuit. And so by looking at patients' eyes, we can determine their risk of going blind 10 years, 20, 30 years down the line because we can see these waste products in the retina and specifically the macula. So as I mentioned to you, this patient we saw many years ago for dry eye, she had drusen in the macula. So drusen is basically these waste products that are just not flushed out, and they look kind of whitish, yellowish under the microscope, and we have a couple of small examples here. So this is one of these uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of things you might see in your doctor's office that kind of goes through what a normal retina might look like, and we'll kind of put this hopefully in the video as well, but you'll see these yellow tiny bumps right in that center, and they're essentially what we call waste products that have not been flushed out, and if they start to accumulate, what starts to happen is that these waste products are sensed by the eye as something that needs to be kind of removed or excreted from the body, so blood vessels are start to come to try to help it. And the problem is that these blood vessels can sometimes bleed. So there are two types of macular degeneration. One is called wet, which stands for bleeding type, and the other is called dry, which stands for the non-bleeding type. So sometimes these little kind of waste products called drusen will start to kind of come together. There'll be so many of them, but the blood vessels don't come together to kind of bleed, which is in a way is a good thing. So technically dry macular degeneration is a better diagnosis than wet macular degeneration because the wet macular degeneration means the blood vessels have come, have started bleeding, and all hell breaks loose. The inflammatory factors start bleeding into the macula. You can have scar tissue permanently. And so the amount of vision loss you can get with wet macular degeneration is generally worse than dry, but nobody wants either one. And so there are now a huge range of treatment options that have happened over the last 20 years. One has come out recently in the last few weeks for the what's called dry geographic atrophy type of macular degeneration. And so when we talk about this kind of wet versus dry, what we're talking about is whether there is a molecule called VEGF. And VEGF is a long name, it stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. And we've talked about this before in previous podcasts because it's a molecule that can lead to a lot of problems. It's, it's good for creating new blood vessels, but when it's in an abnormal state, it can cause abnormal blood vessels to grow, which then leak easily and cause a lot of havoc. So vascular endothelial growth factor, you all have heard me talk about this before with Dr. Judah Folkman, who was one of my advisors when I was at Harvard, is essentially considered the father of finding this molecule called vascular endothelial growth factor. It's a protein. And what he discovered is by a, kind of creating these antibodies to the protein, you can stop that factor from creating new abnormal blood vessels. And this occurs in every part of the body. Every disease in the body associated with new blood vessels can potentially be stopped by an antibody, something against vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, or VEGF. That's the same kind of concept. So he started a whole series of what's called anti-angiogenesis or anti-VEGF molecules that have been used in all types of diseases from cancer, because we know that cancer spreads through new blood vessels. And so there's a whole line of medications that help with that now. Uh, of course, with wet macular degeneration, because these new blood vessels come in and are abnormal, and as well as what's called diabetic macular edema or diabetic retinopathy, where you have new blood vessels that occur that can then start to bleed. So if you're diabetic, which is separate from macular degeneration, but there are similar risks, the key underlying component that's similar is the VEGF molecule. So if you have diabetes and your sugar's going up and down, up and down, up and down, that is a stimulant to increase the VEGF in your body. And when the VEGF in your body increases, then you have new blood vessels that grow and leak, and it can occur in your retina, which of course we see first often, but it can happen in your brain, your kidneys, your liver, your small toes of your, uh, your toes, your fingertips. And so diabetics are well known to need amputations of their toes 
toes and then their foot and then their leg and, of course, injection into their eyes uh, every month or two if they have significant diabetic retinopathy because the VEGF molecule has led to so much extra blood vessels that are leaking, and when they leak, the oxygen doesn't really get to the tissue, and the tissue becomes necrotic, and it dies. And so that's why VEGF is a dangerous substance, and we can do things to decrease that. We'll go through that in a few minutes. So when we're talking about macular degeneration, the same idea. You have the wet macular degeneration, and that's where VEGF is kind of out of control a bit. And so these medications we're going to go through in the next podcast that have been developed to kind of decrease the VEGF molecule have been very exciting because now we can try to control the bleeding so the loss of vision is not so quickly and not so terribly devastating to patients. To backtrack just a little bit before we go into the dry component, when we talk about macular degeneration, what we're talking about is basically losing your central vision. So I mentioned that the macula is in charge of your central vision. And so if we go through one of these common books that we show, uh, for those of you on the YouTube channel, we'll kind of show the pictures of, if you imagine you're looking at me uh, and you're seeing my face and that's your macula kicking in, it's working well. And as the macula starts to degenerate or not function as well with aging, then the center part of my face will just start to disappear. You might see the peripheral part of what's around me, but the center part will disappear, and that's devastating. So, because that's what you see the world with, and that's not fun, and it's very difficult to live your life if you don't see everything in the, the center is missing, and the periphery is just not enough, obviously, to get by with what you need to do, like driving, even walking, taking care of yourself, eating. It's just not as fun, so that's why it can be very devastating. We do have many patients that have both glaucoma and macular degeneration, which, of course, is more likely to lead to complete blindness because glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve, the cable that connects the eye to the brain. And if you, that usually it takes away your peripheral vision and the macular degeneration takes away your central vision. So if you have both, then yes, the vision loss is even more severe. And both of these conditions, macular degeneration and glaucoma, do not have a cure. This is part of the aging process. We do not have a cure for aging yet and the death of cells. So we're trying to, of course, do things to prevent glaucoma, macular degeneration, whether it's wet or dry. So I want to go a little bit into prevention now to talk a little bit about what you can do. So really, we recommend, of course, as much sun protection as you can to your eyes. Sunglasses from when you're a baby to, you know, uh, we would technically say womb to tomb. Like really just as soon as you are born, sunglasses, if you're going to be in the sun, really protect your kids, your your grandkids, your, your eyes from the sun. That's number one. And the issue with the sunlight is the UV and, of course, the blue light also. So that's a concern that we have. So whether it's a hat, sunglasses, we recommend both. Uh, obviously, never sun worshiping or looking directly into the sun because that direct when you look right into the sun, you probably are going to damage your macula by not allowing the waste products to be excreted. It's a physical damage of the light to these sensitive cells called the cones and the and the retinal pigment epithelium, which are the kind of cells that help remove the waste products from the macula. So that's technically why we don't want you to, you know, be in the UV light more than you need to be. And then in terms of your diet, that's a huge component. So antioxidants help the process of preventing waste products from developing too much in the first place and help the excretion of waste products in the second place, and it's neuroprotective. So those are the two key things. So sun protection and diet. And when we say diet, we mean increased antioxidants, such as vitamin A, C, E, lutein, uh, zeaxanthine. Uh, there's a lot of great antioxidants you can get in your food, and that's good not just for your macula, of course, but for your whole body. As, we, as we've talked about in previous podcasts, your diet can also, we think, prevent cancer, diabetes. You can cure a lot of these things or even treat a lot of these things with diet in some cases. So anything you can do to kind of be proactive in that would definitely help. Uh, along with that, of course, is not smoking. And then when we say antioxidants, we mean, of course, eating more green leafy vegetables. So those are the three things. So sun protection, uh, hat sun glasses, eating a lot of green leafy vegetables, increasing your antioxidants, not smoking. Those are the top three things. The fourth is genetic. And so there's a genetic component to macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, cancer, of course, that we try to limit. So those are key things you want to keep in mind. And then the last thing that has not been studied well, but we're very concerned about it, is screen time, blue light from your screens. What kind of effect is that going to do long term? We don't know. And so I'm still a proponent of blue light filtered glasses until we have more data. So we're going to go through next podcast 
on the treatments of wet versus dry macular degeneration and go through the latest, the most exciting news recently is now there's a new medication that just came out that was just FDA approved for dry macular degeneration. Up until now, all of the medications have been anti-VEGF against that new mo that molecule I mentioned that makes blood vessels bleed. Now there's a new anti-complement, which we'll talk, we'll talk about next time, that treats geographic atrophy or dry macular degeneration. So please stay tuned for the next podcast and please subscribe, pass this on to friends and family. And thank you to all who have joined us. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.